with four minutes to go. Lambert hit from the backside. Let's it fly. It's Davis Mitchell is top of the screen Lambert into the end zone double coverage Brian Randolph the defender game over how about the hop did they get over it tonight Eason has it, steps up, looks deep, goes down the left side. He's got a man open. Touchdown, Riley Ridley. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, official kickoff time this week will be 3.39, and as you know, it's a CBS telecast. All right, well, we're excited uh, for the opportunity to play a good Tennessee football team. It's 3-1, and one, and um, we know a lot about them. They know a lot about us. We'll be traveling with probably over half the guys who've never been to uh, Knoxville, never played in that environment. Anytime you go on the road in the SEC, it presents a lot of challenges from a crowd noise standpoint, and um, they always do a tremendous job of being really loud up there. That's a tough place to play, so our focus is on Tennessee and trying to get better and improve during the week. Kirby, I guess this is uh, uh, Jake's next challenge is, is you were talking about crowd noise. I guess that's one of the loudest places. He hasn't really encountered that yet. Will that be a whole whole new thing for him any quarterback that plays there knows it's tough to play it and that that crowd noise um obviously jacob has played in those environments before when he's played uh, all over the sec i like to think notre dame was very loud at times um we didn't have to go on silent a whole lot but we had to practice it all week so Fromm's dealt with that from that standpoint you would mentioned both jacob and jake does that mean that you possibly count on eason being out there this week Correct. Possibly count on Eason. I mean, it's his deal. We don't know. I mean, possibility. Yeah. I mean, we're going to bring him out there and see where he is. The focus for Jacob Eason is to get healthy and be part of this game plan and learn what to do. The focus for Fromm is to focus on improving and getting better. The point for both of them is to have team vision, to have the goal to make the team better. So the both are working on that. It's not just about them individually.
threat statistics Tennessee posed that you guys really have to focus on? Well, number one threat is they have a tremendous special teams unit. They're really good on all special teams fronts. Their, their punt returners return the ball really well this year. They got a great kickoff return. What I would say is arguably probably the best in the country and well coached. So those guys do a great job. And then on both offense and defensive side of the ball, they have good weapons. They've got good players. And uh, we got to do a good job executing us to take care of them. The biggest thing is striking people up front defensively and making sure we understand our gap control. Um, we're going to do a great job of that. We don't want to butt tackle, which that's trying to knock somebody down without wrapping them up. we got to have more guys wrapping up. We didn't think that we uh, tackled real well um, in the Mississippi State game. we got to do a much better job of that against Tennessee, who has a great back. Um, he makes plays in space. And then offensively, just playing a cleaner game. We don't want mental errors. We don't want uh, missed assignments. We want guys to execute and do their job with a higher efficiency rate so we can be more successful. When they had to have him, I mean, he came within a drop pass of winning that football game from John Kelly. He's all by himself in the backfield right now. Five receivers set. Already looking right. And is it intercepted? It is. Tyreek McGee, first play of the game. yard field goal and up and good so Georgia take boy quick jump off the edge by Tennessee's defense oh, nice throw. this throws right on the money though got one and he lost the ball but it goes out of bounds third down and five Jake Fromm plenty of time fires far side touchdown Javon Wims so short Wims goes deep, look at that leverage, and a great throw by Fromm. 13, that's the first big run they've had. Georgia goes a little tempo here. Nick Chubb patiently waits before he cuts it outside, and now he's all the way out to midfield. Fromm, there is the pressure, steps out of it, might keep it now, and Fromm, oh, he took a wicked well, hit at the 35, slide. but he's got a first some possible pressure off the corner. They're going to bring it. But Swift is too swift. Still going. DeAndre Swift to the 10 yard. From again, get some heat. And he's going to run again, and he's going to score. Touchdown, Georgia. Don't 25. They need some offense here before halftime. Pump fake. And down the sideline. And intercepted by Georgia. J.R. Reed coming the other way. Another deflected pass, and Georgia's got it back. Lay it out. You've got a chance to get it to Palmer. Ball's underthrown. Good defense. And all of a sudden, it's a turnover. J.R. Ryan Harrion in the backfield for Georgia for the first time. He'll get the carry. And Harrion got outside containment, still on his feet. First and goal. And around three wideouts, but Chubb right there with Fromm. And Fromm keeps it and again walks in. Touchdown, Georgia. His second. Here's the play action, and there's the sack. Davin Bellamy came around the corner. Whole bunch. Now, this should be screen or draw, shouldn't it? Yeah, screen or draw. And there it is to Kelly, and Georgia blows it up. First guy there was Malcolm Parrish. This should be Dorbidi's first pass of the second half. It's over the middle, and it's right on target to a streaking John Kelly. Biggest play of the game for Tennessee. Still on his feet. Kelly, what a play. Ball is out. Got it out late. You got to be as a program. So first down by penalty. Dorbidi pumps once, goes long on the other side. That's Callaway, and he drops it. He's underthrown. Have there been about... Four of those in this game. At that, least. Yep. And Callaway's down. Pretty talked about they go nine deep in the defensive line. No game there. David Martin. And so far leading the shutout. Sonny Michelle straight up the middle. Sonny to the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. Remember Kenyon Drake? Oh, yeah. Just like him. That's his third rushing touchdown of the year from 21 yards out. It is 31 to nothing, dogs. And I think you got to start to be able to match Whoa. Alabama in the offensive defensive line. And, be, and hits the line drive and uh, too low of a line drive. Not often you block one with your head. 
<laughs> between last week and this. Right. Arian trying to spin his way in. He backs in. I think he did. He did. Touchdown, Georgia. Just I mean, that, listen, either way, Kirby's pitching a shutout here with, with the way his Ooh. decisions. How about that hit? I, I mean, in a game. Let's suppose he's struggling in a game. Would you go to the backup? Well, Holyfield, that didn't look like a backup. Elijah trying to get to the end zone. He's got... <laughs> We're beating up Peyton. It's his day. <laughs> I know. That, 13 years old. <laughs> They're still watching my. They're still watching my video games. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I know. Version today for Tennessee. This one's going to be draw play. They won't convert this one either. Jacob Eason in the gun. Gives it off to Holyfield. And another tough run by Elijah. Close to a first down. So we're going to work our way under two minutes. Four. So take a right knee, Jacob, not the left one. <laughs> Up with his hand on the ground, and here comes McKenzie again. Toss sweep. McKenzie. I don't know if he got it. Did Zach Cunningham? Yes, it was 41 and white. Zach Cunningham. Did he make another outstanding play for the Commodores? Just a second. Well, of those tackles today, none would be bigger. And Georgia is short. Zach Cunningham, the SEC's leading tackler, who had a career day. On the flip side of this, where's Georgia go right now? And Georgia goes into a bye week with a lot of work to do. That's for sure. And special teams, decision making, you know, not only in coverage, but also in the return game. A lot of hidden yardage in there. And an offense that has got to figure out what their identity needs to be. They've got playmakers. But it sure did not show up in this game here today. And credit Vanderbilt for doing an excellent job of bouncing back off of their heartbreaking loss. Um, well, I think any chance you get to go to Nashville and play Vandy, I know they got a great program. Derek does a really good job with his team. You know, we did a tremendous job last year against us from a special team standpoint, really dominated and controlled the game up front with our defensive line. So uh, got a lot of challenges ahead of us in regards to uh, preparing for um, Vandy and you know, wanting to keep the team's mentality of getting better and improving each week. That's the challenge we're presented with now. It only gets greater because of the attention surrounding the team, but for us it's really about getting better and focusing on the next opponent, and that's where we're at. Kirby, I know this is no surprise. You'll get asked this one, but will Jake start Saturday, and how will you kind of handle that moving forward? Will it be evaluations in practice, all games? How will that kind of work? Yeah, it'll be just like last week. It'll be evaluated in practice, and uh, I do think that uh, Jacob is much closer to 100%. Obviously, last week he didn't get cleared until somewhere around midweek, so um, for him, uh, it was important to knock the rust off. He felt like he did that in that game, got to go out there, and um, he'll compete this week, and we'll do it like we do every position. Kirby, you mentioned the attention in your opening statement. What are the specific things you do as a coach to keep your players from buying into the hype? Well, we practice, and when we practice, we practice hard, and, and we show kids the tape. We're very honest with them. I think when you watch the tape, everybody can get humbled by the tape. You know, we, we got beat. Uh, we got beat up at positions. We, we got we got blocked at positions. So Monday is all we're worried about, and we're really focused on, we call Monday Block Protection Monday because we go out and really work on blocking people on offense or protecting blocks on defense, and that's one of the number one things we can get better at. And if you get better at that, it doesn't matter what you call a lot of times. You just get better at the fundamentals, and, and we try to humble the guys by showing them the honest truth. Thank you, Reese. Lee has overcome so much and turned the headgear bit into a franchise. Way to go, my friend.
Welcome to Nashville, where Georgia will take on Vanderbilt, a school that has only hosted College Game Day once in 2008. And with more on that, here's Paul Carcantero. And it is absolutely warmed down. They have to get some rest on the sideline. It'll be interesting to see what happens here with Vandy taking the opening kickoff. They've got to create that running game. Duncan and Wakefield are deep for Vanderbilt, but the return stops shy of the 20 yard line. And here it looks like they have uh, their Wildcat formation. Not very good snap. Blazing game, you know, he's he's a slower guy. Probably wanted to hand that ball off. Some of these teams get, but they need a lot of a lot, lot of toughness, mental toughness in this offense. Shermer throws out in the flat. That'll be a short game. Nice reaction by DeAndre Walker. Pistol Webb is deep. They fake it to him. Shermer throws downfield. Incomplete in and out of the hands of Sherfield. They're incredible. Swift is swift. Chubb runs violent as you see him right here. He's gone. Touchdown, Georgia. Boy, did they make that look easy. Well, what happened is they started going NASCAR off offense. Check into an eight-man front and run right into it. They're going to be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Webb can't get outside. Sanders was waiting for him and turned him in. That's the, that's the team. They've protected Schirmer pretty well so far. Here comes pressure. And he throws almost intercepted and then almost caught. Use this win at their back in case they have to kick a field goal. Michelle. Sony Michelle inside the 15. Fromm gives it to Michelle. Not a lot of resistance. And look at this. He's going to get some help from his offensive line. Takes it to the sixth. From the throw. Swift in the flat. Dives for the pylon. What's the call? Touchdown. Touchdown. And Fromm pays off the drive with a touchdown pass to Swift. Lean back and let it go. Touchdown. Two tight ends on the field, two wide outs, and Webb. Webb trying to get to the outside. Tries to use a stiff arm. Nothing doing, says Roquan Smith, their leading tackler. Blazingame tries to go up the middle. Did not have a chance because Jawan Taylor was right in the hole waiting for him. Yeah, this Looks like there was some confusion, but the pass is complete. That'll be a first down to Javon Wims. He nine checks in. He's in the slot. He's the man in motion. Back toward the backfield. From the time, throws complete, and that's a first down and more. Caught by Godwin. Oh, what a good throw by Fromm under pressure. In the foot, Chubb and the Wildcat. Straight up the middle, first down and more. Chubb keeps his legs driving. Who has played Alabama this year. The reaction is just wow. This is Fromm. Got away, steps out of bounds inside the 15 yard line. Chubb, look out. Touchdown, Georgia. Twelve carries, 106 yards, and two touchdowns. Here you see it. Just an inside zone play. 34 can't get off the block. Touchdown, Georgia. The second half is the tailback. Gets the carry off the left side, big hole, and Chubb picks up 10. They'll go with Michelle. Big hole! Sony Michelle across midfield and absolutely ran over Ladarius Wiley. 222 pounds at full speed. From Rifles one wide open touchdown. Terry Godwin. 47 yards, and Jawan Williams was beaten by a step and a half. Yep. Michelle. Look at this. First and 15, no problem. 
Michelle straight up the middle. It's a foot race. Sony Michelle was he out of bounds? Signal is touchdown. And no indication from the trail defender that he or the trail referee that he stepped on the sideline. But boy, that was close too. This may be a lot of ground and pound right here. And Chubb starts it off with a nine-yard gain in that. Chubb, another 10, 80 yards rushing today. 280. There's Swift. He can add another 15 to it. But can he throw it against an elite defense? We'll find out, as you said, down the line. Draw play, Michelle. Boy, another 10. And just like anything else they've done today, that one is perfect. Jet sweep, Lipscomb. Look at that pursuit. Jeez. They came into this game allowing 9.2. Webb, no chance. What a wonderful job by DeAndre Walker. Shermer under pressure. Throws the out, complete to midfield, and a little more to C.J. Duncan. That's going to be about a yard and a half shy. Backfield, they'll go with Blazing Game in the Wildcat. Instead, Shermer takes the handoff, and Blazing Game is stuffed. All 235 pounds of them. Good protection. Playing man-to-man -man defense, so they don't see Fromm scrambling, and he's able to get a lot of yardage out of that. Quarterback, keeper, Fromm. Well, Kirby will like that one a lot better. Holyfield is the running back. He had the last carry. He's got it again, and Holyfield straight up the middle. Touchdown. I hate to see that out of Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt is just about to shut it down. You know, they're barely getting in their stance. Giving up 1,100 yards rushing. 1,100. Almost gets him to Alabama, but Kirby got him in the end. He's a Georgia player, high school player, so it'll be fun to watch over the years. He's in on that play there. Pretty impressive stuff when you run as of yesterday. But I know who that's going to be, too. Pressure coming. They set up the little check down. And Wakefield taken out of bounds. That would be a big loss for Vandy down the road if he's out. Georgia's not going to take an easy touchdown. No, here. sir. They, they have a lot of pride. DeAndre Walker said no dice on that one. This year, that's a category that they'll, they'll talk about. Herrian. Two thousand five was the last time this club started six and zero. They were seven and zero that year, and who knows what the limit is for this ball club. Yards to keep this thing going. A minute thirty six to play in the ball game. Missouri twenty seven, Georgia twenty one. Michelle and Stanley go to the right. Three receivers to the left. McKenzie in the slot, Blazevich and Godwin, empty set, Eason, shotgun snap, he backs up, throw over the middle, he's got a man, McKenzie, did he catch it, yeah, touchdown, touchdown Isaiah, right over the middle, Eason lobbed it up right towards the goal post, and McKenzie caught it, and he's being mobbed over the back line of the end zone. Well, we're excited to get a game at home, homecoming, another night game. We're expecting our crowd to be uh, extremely loud and turn out in forces, and uh, we need them. Uh, we got a good opponent to get ready for, a good challenge for us. Um, obviously, their record does not indicate how good they are, and we know that as coaches. Our job is to get that message to our players. Um, this is an extremely high-powered offense. 
extremely explosive. To be honest, offensively, they've only stopped themselves. Um, not many people have stopped them as far as yardage. And we still probably hadn't seen a front quite as big and playing as many people as Mizzou does. They play a lot of guys. They play about 10 guys up front, and we'll face uh, better fronts than we faced the last couple games in coming weeks, including this week. we got to have a good plan, and we got to play well. Together, everyone achieves more. That's what team stands for. And if everybody wins, then at the end of the day, the accolades will come. Kirby, I, I guess I'll be the one that asks this. You, you guys moved up to fourth in the in the rankings. Obviously, that means that all possibilities are on the table. I'm just wondering how you manage that. Yeah, I mean, you you address it with the kids. We don't talk about what we're ranked. We didn't talk about where we're ranked last week. It's really no difference because none of it matters. I mean, all we talk about is a race, and there's a race, and the race is, you know, at the 50-meter mark, and that's where the race is. And I don't know one person that ever talked about, you know, Gatlin being ahead of Bolt at the 50 meter mark. Nobody cared. So nobody cares about that. They only care about where you finish. They only care about what you do next. And that's our objective is to do what's next. Undefeated. Quality wins throughout the season. And another conference test tonight. Is this a championship team? We'll get one step closer to answering that question this evening between the hedges. Welcome everybody, Tom Hart alongside Jordan Rogers. The atmosphere unparalleled. This is what you get when you come on the road in the SEC. Yeah, I've been on the other side of a lot of these cheers before. I haven't played here. It's a sight to see a sea of red. And that will make an upset even tougher for this Missouri Tigers as Georgia takes the field. Welcome to SEC Saturday Night, presented by Holiday Inn Express. One and four Missouri, looking for its first SEC win of the season against undefeated and fourth-ranked Georgia. Teams in Georgia history. Now he's the head man in the visor. Underway between the hedges, the kickoff is short, and it's taken at the 10-yard line. Missouri will dance all the way out to the 30. A little bit of running room for Larry Roundtree. And Roundtree, the third-string running back, takes it almost to midfield and a great starting point for this Missouri offense 42 touches in his first start and he went for 174 against Mizzou now Michelle in the backfield already three different tailbacks next to Fawn complete for a Georgia first down and Terry Godwin gain of 28 on Fawn's first attempt we'll pull that ball and deliver it accurately and decisively talking with offensive coordinator Jim Cheney so this guy's hard to trick much he hadn't seen and he's only a freshman Fron, another deep ball and another completion of Javon Wims and Georgia's got another first down they're doing it through the air here early that's what Jim Cheney said they might do get aggressive through the air former basketball player Wims couple of catches here early on the jet sweep they put it in the hands of Hardman and Nico Hardman has a first down and plenty he's gonna take it in from 35 yards out Zoo brings four from fires and it's intercepted by Kale Garrett a one-handed snag and the Tigers have it at the five-yard line on Garrett's second pick of the season well we just got done praising him Tom this is one of the things when you're a young quarterback sometimes you make that decision on pass plays before the snap Witter was fantastic a little option look Drew Locke, shovel pass, touchdown, Albert Okuwebuna. And I love this play call, Tom. Rick Haley, the defensive line coach. From unloads, another one down the sideline to Javon Williams. And Jake Fromm has found a soft spot in the Missouri defense when Williams has found the sideline. The ground in the incompletion. Games up front from the Missouri defensive line again. Fromm back outside again. Riley Ridley, 21 yards in a Georgia first down. Anything further than 22, that safety's got time to react, and that was a few yards past. Fromm's pick came on third down. Sideline, back shoulder, 
Caught. Inbounds or not? Yes. Touchdown, Riley Ridley. They're ultra passing tonight. Missouri won't bring it out. And so 316 to go. So you, you talk about Georgia's plan of attack against Missouri, a team that has yet to win in the league this year. Are, are they trying to, this might sound silly, are they trying to win this game? Or are they trying to set Jake Fromm up for great second half of the season? Well, they're trying to do both. And I think you can do both. You have a young quarterback, the worst thing you can do is handcuff him, right? Not allow him to develop as a passer. And then you just got to call plays, right? But it's got to be within the flow of the game. When you run the ball well, like Georgia does, that opens up the play action. It opens up the intermediate zones. And you see them attack that a few times already. The officials. Cost the Tigers an opportunity there, third 11. Lock will unload. Wide open, Emmanuel Hall. He's got this one, and he's got six. Sixty-three yard strike from Drew Locks. Georgia having a hard time getting the ground game going. Not something I expected to say tonight. Second and three with Nick Chubb in the backfield. Chubb changes direction behind the line. He's got a first down and a hurdle. He takes it for 19 after clearing a man. You have a lot of depth. If you can get him tired, you're going to wear him down and see that running game start to really pick up. From already halfway to 300. Here's Sony Michelle. Sony Michelle off to the races. Not going to kill him. Defense. They can keep him in there and run and block and had success doing that, and then they make plays on the outside just as easily. Locke takes another shot. Hall again. Emmanuel Hall with a big gain and a touchdown for Missouri. 63 yards. Same number he put up last quarter. Boy, Georgia's got to fix something because Emmanuel Hall, these plays aren't even designed to necessarily be shots to number 84. But the coverage on the outside, that's cover three. And he just ran straight by Tyreek McGee. When you need it most, go to your horses. Mm -hmm. Michelle back there now. Missouri only brings four. Fromm is able to find his tight end. It's Charlie Warner. And he's got plenty of room. He's falling the lead. And Chubb with a hurdle. He's at inside the 25. 49 yard run for Charlie Warner. Wow. From to the outside. That's complete to Hardman. And he'll be brought down at the 20. To gain a 12. And that'll bring on Blankenship in a kicking situation. Kirby Smart awarded him with a scholarship right before a game against Notre Dame. Announced it after that big win in South Bend. This will be from 37. He hasn't missed from inside 40 this year. The upright to get through. Plenty of leg for Rodrigo Blankenship. Sophomore out of Sprayberry High School. Drew Locke licking his chops, ready to get back on offense. The first time Georgia held to just three instead of seven. And Blankenship has the dogs in front again. Traditionally, this defense and what they do allows you to play base coverage, but they're not getting to them. They're going to find ways to do that. Melanie playing with the club on that. Left hand, he said it's like carrying around a weight, another three and a half, four pounds. Third down, eight. Lock deep over the middle and picked off. Intercepted by Dominic Sanders. Second pick of the season for Sanders, and he stays on his feet. Looks more like Barry Sanders to keep his balance, and he's got Georgia and Missouri territory. The senior from Tucker, Georgia, with the pick. Fromm wants a deep ball. They'll go intermediate instead, and wide open is Javon Wims. Cut down at the 22, a game of 19. Georgia. Fromm's going to keep this one. And he spins 
his way just shy of a first down. Run out. Perkins got to him. And that's going to leave third and one. Fromm had four carries for 42 yards last week against Vandy. He can do this. That's one of the things he does different than Jacob Eason. He's a little more mobile. He's not a guy that's going to beat you for 40 yards, but you got a zone read. That end hesitates or bites on the run. He'll hurt you. Third and one. Nick Chubb hasn't been on the field this possession for Georgia. It's Sony Michelle again now. Swift on the jet sweep. He's got a first down. Ducks inside the five. And DeAndre Swift sets up Georgia. Second and goal. Fry. Touchdown. Jake Fry on the ground. lead of the night for the dogs. Demario Crockett hit at the line of scrimmage, maybe found one. Roquan Smith, junior from Montezuma, Georgia, down in Macon County, had 11 tackles against Tennessee. Top 10 in the league in tackles this season. And it leaves Locke with a third and seven in this crowd. Closest receiver and Missouri needed some time on the clock to waste away because they've given up a couple scores without answering. They're down 10 and they're going to give it back to Georgia with two and a half to go in the half. And 10. Now, Nicole Hardman there. Thought they might go to the slot. Instead, it's Michelle. Whoa! And he's supposed to be the lightning in the package. He just put DeMarcus AC on his back. Wow. Sony Michelle, 5'11, 215 pounds. Two set. Flack rolling, third and four. From over the middle. Complete. As Charlie Warner is having a big day. Dad, uh, pardon me, Uncle Scott in the College Football Hall of Fame. He's a great defensive back here in Georgia. Just yet, even with 14 seconds left. Michelle, first down. Find the stop for the first down and then give Georgia time to use the timeout. That's what Kirby Smart will do. Cole Rodrigo Blankenship has a pretty good mentor down on the sideline and a practice a couple times a week, doesn't he? Tom, how cool is this? Kicker for the Super Bowl champion 1985 Chicago Bears, Kevin Butler, one-time all-time leading scorer here in the SEC. Spends two days a week at practice with the Georgia Bulldogs. He has one class left before he graduates in the spring. He is the kicking coach and has worked on the fundamentals. He told me the main thing that he's focused on with the kickers and the punters has been balance, repetitive balance. He sort of talks about it like a golf swing. And he said a lot of guys don't have a kicking coach, so they don't get into a rhythm. They don't have the same kind of practice every week. They have focused in on that. Well, he would know. He won them his flight of the member guests a few weeks ago, I understand. 43-yard attempt now for Blankenship. To the chagrin of our stats man in the booth, Greg Campbell. Here's from 43, and it is good. <laughs> Proud teacher right there. Outrods hit a couple of big ones. Big one in the fourth quarter against Georgia to get this season started. Georgia will receive the second half kick. They've opened up a 34 to 21 lead. It's half they're going to need more of that to catch up with the fourth ranked dogs in the second half. Nicole Hardman will bring it out from a yard deep. And he gets tripped up 
by taking it out just past the 20 yard line. Let's go down the field, check in with Cole Kublik. Buys and Jake Fromm already nine tackles tonight for Missouri's middle linebacker. Nobody out on Javon Wims, and Javon Wims turns it upfield. Turned about a 12 yard gain into a 16 yard gain. Thomas Wilson is stopped for Mizzou. Chubb again. Able to lose two guys in the backfield. And shoved down one in the secondary. Nick Chubb, the senior from Cedartown, Georgia, is able to pick up 21. There for a play or two, but didn't get a carry. Second and 11. Michelle. He is just running over people. Thomas Wilson, the latest Tiger to get trucked to gain a 17. Lincolnship. Everything's good on George's end. Hot Rod bangs another one through, and George's got a 37 21 lead on Mizzou. Taken away. Drew Locke's going to have to visit a seamstress before they come back on the field. Gets away from Fatoni. Corey Fatoni gets taken down at the 10. Lorenzo Carter with the stop. Missouri has had snapping issues all season long. It came to a head Saturday night at Kentucky. So they replaced James Workman with Drew Wise, a freshman out of Lawrence, Kansas. For Rodrigo Blankenship, he's three for three tonight. He came in with six field goals on the season. And he's got four tonight. How much going wrong for Kirby Smart's Bulldogs tonight from Missouri with a key mistake in special teams. I gave Georgia a short field and they cash in for three. In many ways, it's about every way. And Nick Chubb has stated that one of his goals is to get the NFL, come back with some NFL money, and help rebuild Chubb Town. And here's DeAndre Swift. And DeAndre Swift living up to his name. Takes it all the way down for a 72-yard gain into the 11-yard line. Tackles, but no contain on the outside. George has exploited that all night. Out of North Philadelphia. And here's Michelle. And there's the end zone. Second touchdown of the night for Sony Michelle. Drew Locke to run, and he gets taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Kel Carter with the stop. Locke checks to his second receiver. He's got Jonathan Johnson into Georgia territory. His way up. Down to his tight end, Reese over the middle. Touchdown, Missouri. Jason Reese with his third touchdown of the season. Fourth touchdown pass tonight for Drew Locke. SEC Saturday Night is presented by Holiday Inn Express. Be the readiest. Well, a nation ready. How about this scene? Coming into the fourth quarter tonight. the lights at Sanford Stadium and cell phones providing even more light. Talking to this coaching staff, they're running through all the riches they have at tailback and they said, listen, we need to get DeAndre on the field so we put him out there in the slot. We'd love to have him in the backfield more, but you don't want to take Chubb and Michelle out there. That's complete to the outside and Nico Hardman and he is going to go. Hardman with the Jets and it's a 59-yard touchdown. They 
they switched him from defensive back in the spring. I'd say it's paid off his second touchdown of the night. Every period of practice goes from mm -hmm. the tone to the demeanor to the execution. That's how you get better in the second half of the season. You don't get complacent. You stay consistent in what you do every single day to continue to get better. He said it's pretty simple. I was with a guy for 12 years, Alabama, Miami, LSU. It's in my DNA. 701 yards of total offense tonight for Georgia. It's the second most in Georgia history. Drew Locke in Missouri made it a game in the first half. A shootout early. But the Tigers held a, a single touchdown in the second half. Jake Fromm is going to stay undefeated as the starter for Georgia. Not bad for a freshman. He's 8 of 9 for the year. They fake it. And they go right. And they have a touchdown from Michael McNeely, the holder. Well, you got to manufacture some offense. And Will Muschamp dialed one up this time. Here's Kelvin Taylor going right. Put him over 400 yards rushing. Gosh, Mike. I find it uh, quite a paradox when your athletic director is skipping down the sidelines and your coach knows it ain't over yet. Well, that is the season and what's that's next. Right. Well, he, yeah, I mean, he, you know, he, I'm not taking anything away from Georgia. They're, you know, they, they are what they are, but that man has never won this football game. He's always been on the losing side. He played at Georgia. He's coached here. And he's an O until today. Pulls it up. He's pursued. He fires in the end zone. Intercepted. How about that? Keanu Neal. Interception, Florida. Scarlett takes his place. Here's Scarlett up the middle, out of a tackle and across the 50. Foot race. One player has an angle and he bumps him out of bounds. Elvin Taylor gets the handoff, darts to the outside. Nice. Oh boy. Nice. Talking about the quick feet, huh? They're back. Really nice. 16 yard touchdown run. Kelvin Taylor. No need. Yeah, it's very. I don't get that one. Mark Herndon. Oh, they just wanted to get a, a run for a young player. There you go. So they didn't get a field goal for the guy, but they got a run, a run for someone else. McKinnis will be able to tell his kids after he becomes a dentist. That's his aspiration. Right, there you go. You know, a picture of him in that Gator uniform will be on the wall when you're lean back and he's drilling you're going to be able to see that picture of him in that gator uniform take away the paint of a root canal <laughs> unless you're a georgia fan yes Callaway in motion sweet touchdown wow, boy it was it ever Eason, he will tuck it. That is the play after. Eason. Now, can you shake the tackle? No, he cannot. Yep. Jay, Gerard Davis, Jared yep. Davis. Defensive talent sitting in a zone this time to watch Davis. 
close straight ahead. He's still got that quickness. And the Florida defense was the difference again for that one in a football game. Because of the postponement, the result of Hurricane Matthew. Their second game in a month. And now with 35 seconds to go, headset off. Congratulations to the team. Coach said in a meeting the other day that um, stand up if you beat Florida. If you played in a game and beat Florida, nobody stood up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Good on red, fast. Fast as you can go. Let's go. Make it real. Make it real. You got to kick it right here. Kick it right here. I'd say intense. Um, I think that that's a, that's a pretty good one for it. It's going to come down to physicality, I feel like. I would say this rivalry is just a knockout, drag out brawl for 60 minutes. Let's do it. We gonna attack the day. Kirby Smart, all access. Sanford Stadium for the first game. Try to play at the Notre Dame. Dog Nation got the crowd going, playing Tennessee for the fifth game. We gonna attack the day. Between the hedges where we play. They, they, they about to come to the state, but Mississippi sitting right in our way. They got the rankings in order. Jacksonville, Georgia, Florida. Then we go back to the state. Drive two hours away. All the Tigers who we play, then we go back to the old fashioned hate. Georgia Tech is who we play, then we go back to the old Georgia way. We gonna attack the day. Kirby Smart, all access. <laughs> Thanks everybody for coming. Official kick time this week will be 3.39, as you know, on CBS. Getting ready for Florida. You know, we prepared a little bit Thursday. It's an exciting game. I think when you talk about a neutral site game in Jacksonville, I think uh, all the players really enjoy that atmosphere, the 50-50 um, stands, and um, great opportunity to go play a good football team. Kirby, last year you guys struggled to run the ball against them. I mean, they're always good up front. What gives you the confidence that this can be a different story running the ball on them? I think they've got a tremendous front this year. You know, last year they had uh, probably more depth, more guys up there. Um, I've seen a lot of their defense because we've had games um, that we've played crossover teams. And uh, certainly explosive, quick, it'll be a challenge. I mean, it's hard to run the ball in the SEC, I keep telling y'all. It's something you got to be committed to. You've got to do it a lot, and you've got to try to – Try to wear people down, so we'll we'll find a tough sledding, I'm sure. I, I think anytime you've got a, fr a true freshman starting, it's 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 challenging. Um, I think this kid's grown; he's gotten better each week. Um, hope that continues. It's not just the fact we're playing in Jacksonville; it's that we're playing against a caliber of defense that has been really, I mean, over the last ten years, they've been you know, one of the best defenses in the country. We obviously pay close. Uh, attention to these trends you know does that manifest itself at all on the field of play you know players feeling pressure that we haven't won in x amount of years yeah I, I, you know i think trends are pretty commonplace i mean it has a lot to do with who the quarterback is who the defense is who the players are and at the end of the day it's it boils down to players and and guys making plays and not turning the ball over and how you respond to a little adversity because in this game it's traditionally been a seesaw type game. So the number one thing we're concerned with is what's going to allow us to play our best football game, what's going to allow us to be uh, uh, more sound in execution, what's going to allow us to protect the ball and attack the ball better defensively and offensively. And it's not about what the, what the favorite is, what the line is. I mean, it's going to boil down to how we play. And that's Lewis in motion out of the backfield. Malik Davis, Georgia stretches it out, he goes down. John Atkins makes the tackle after a gain of about a yard. Anywhere. Franks, pockets collapsing, down he goes.
goes back at the 15-yard line. That is Lorenzo Carter. Rush. Georgia finally scores a sack. The punt will go to the 32. To Nicole Hardman. Trying to weave his way and does for a pretty nice return. And it's going to be great starting field position for Georgia. Dog down here for Georgia in this situation. Third they down at two. From throw. They're going to throw out in the flat to Swift. DeAndre Swift down the sideline. Blasts his way past one tackler and he's got it first and goal, Georgia. Right in stride and that's the key again. When you're trying to throw these short passes, the running back or the receiver do not have a lot of time to adjust. He'll get the carry. Straight up the middle. He's in. Touchdown, Georgia. In the red zone now this year. Well, Nada gets a good block. At least he accepts a good block that time. And then... You saw the difference this year. A healthy Nick Chubb keeps those legs going, those powerful weightlifting legs. With the punt, see if they can get something positive here. Piran. Georgia stretches it out and drops him at the line, if not for a loss. Field. Felipe Franks with four receivers. Trying to find just one. And he's having trouble locating one. Throws it out of bounds. Play action, Franks. Flushed out of the pocket again. Throws high, incomplete. No. Intended for Swain. It is picked off by yep. Georgia. Yep. Dominic Sanders. Action pass on third and long, and Georgia had no part of it. Getting inside was Ledbetter, number 13. And then the overthrow. Thank you very much. Those safeties have their eyes on the ball. For Georgia. Nick Chubb cuts outside. Nice move. First down. And Moore, still on his feet, all the way to the 12. From fires left side. What a catch! Touchdown, Wims! Wait a second. Um, I got him perfectly covered, and that is a perfect throw. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning type throw. High to the outside. Only one guy could get it, and he did. Malik Davis was in the backfield. Now goes out in a slot to the right as Franks comes back. <laughs> Brandon Powell got hammered by Reggie Carter as soon as he got his hands on the ball. Reggie Carter, number 45. Uh, looks like, obviously, a tunnel screen coming back inside. Nobody even comes close to blocking the linebacker. He lost yardage on his first carry. Not on this one. Sony Michel, he's going to earn it all, I think, Gary. Sony Michel trying to outrun Florida and does. Touchdown. You've been nicked against these guys. There have been no holes. You come back for one more year to show Florida what you got. And you give them what you got right there. What a run. Cat. And Tony will take it and go straight to that sideline. That, the problem with that is your quarterback's not going to throw a block for you out there. And that's why I wonder why not use Zyre out there. Play fake. Wanted to throw quickly. Throws late, but got it to Davis. Boy, and he was being... Hunted down by Tyler Clark, number 52 that time. Shuttle pass inside to Goolsby. That's going nowhere. Straight four-man rush for Georgia still. They make Franks have to come out of the pocket, and he lost the ball. Scooped up by Pirine. Pocket, and you don't want to face this guy. Roquan Smith is one of the best tacklers in this conference. Great speed. Beauty. One of three touchdowns in this quarter. Now it's Nick Chubb. Chubb takes it outside, drags the Gators with him for a first down. Talking about 111 on the ground, and Chubb looking for more. Nick found an opening, and Chubb going to take Chauncey Gardner for a ride. Play action. Franks pressured, lobs it to the corner, incomplete. David. David Bellamy was coming around the corner. Christian Payne, the fullback, back there with him. And he's going to follow his fullback. And Nick still on his feet. Almost got a first down run. And 
will try to follow his fullback again, but Florida waiting for him, and he dives forward and got the first anyway. He'll try it here, and up the middle, broke a tackle. Sonny Michelle all the way out across the 30 to the 32. I think Franks in trouble in the backfield and trying to throw it away. And it's intercepted, Hell, but the whistle's whistle blew. blew. Yep, whistle's blew. Aaron Davis just trots in the end zone, but in the grasp, the whistle's blew, and it should have been the call. They are officially the road team, but it looks like they're playing on their home turf right now. 21 to nothing, the halftime score. For Allie's halftime interview with Coach Kirby Smart, go to Twitter at SEC on CBS. But right now, Zook and the guys in New York. The four-yard line. they got to get to the 20. Bootleg, Frank's running for his life. Throws in desperation. And off the fingertips of Goolsby. There's a flag down at the two-yard line, though. Fast interference. Offense, number 30. That's going to be the crime. Fourth. First down. Correction. First down. Floor on a run blitz. Fromm keeps it. And gets a first down. Took a shot at the end, but he picked up about 12. He, he said he had a great quarterback. I mean, I get it. He's just throwing simple passes. I get it. Anybody can throw a slant. I get it. But I mean, like I said, we're just playing football. He's, if he's one of the best quarterbacks, like I said, so be it. But he has to play Saturday. We're going to see what his best attribute is. And 11. From throwing to Beautiful. Swift on a crossing Beautiful. route. And Swift blasts his way into Florida territory at the 45. And, he, and, and let it go. You've got a running back and you've got... A receiver to the one side, the running goes on the on the linebacker. You could either go to their wide receiver wide or one-on-one -on -one with your running back, and he goes to the right matchup on the linebacker. And Chauncey Gardner, who earlier this week said, yeah, Fromm, anybody can throw a slant, but Chauncey wasn't thinking about DeAndre Swift on a 19-yard slant that he got leveled at the end of the play. Behind Fromm at the 45. And so he's got an opening, and when he gets an opening, he can do this. Georgia. That's where he's supposed to be. A little bit of a half block up front and a touchdown. You dial it up with an eight-man box. You bring your safety down, they run right at you, and they score. Like a chips kick. Returnable. Oh. Lemons, big collision. Oh. Doesn't make the 20. I'll give Lemons a lot of credit, though. He hit that thing full speed. Play action. Franks double clutches. Wants to throw short and now can't find anybody. And he's going down again. Sacked by a whole pound of dogs before. Third and six. Here comes the rush again, and down goes Philippe by Franks again. Ball is out. Is it a touchdown? It is. J.R. Reed's got it. Coming off the right side over here. The play was actually made with the pre-alignment for the Georgia defense. They put two linebackers right over the center, and then they bailed out of there. They caught the blockers, and that allowed a free pass for J.R. Reed to get back there. The midfield, give it to him again. This time runs into his own guy, stumbled a little bit coming out of the blocks, and stopped for no gain. Georgia delayed blitz, Franks in trouble again, and he's going to get hammered down again, and that delayed blitz was DeAndre Walker, and he's the guy that got him. to watch him. Florida State got hammered last night by Boston College. And Michael Pirine, his run and run out of bounds, will officially end the third quarter for him. So if he does, whoop, quick snap. He wasn't expecting it. Look out. Franks trying to gather himself in the end zone. Throws incomplete and takes a hit at the end of the play from Walter Grant. And third down at five. First down. Uh, how about holding on to that 
that football by Swift on that play. And three snaps, and it's Jacob Eason that's going to yes. take that snap. Holyfield. Elijah Holyfield. And he's on his way down the sideline. Touchdown. All the backs are getting in the act. On a dog day afternoon in Jacksonville, Elijah Holyfield goes 44 yards for the score. I really don't know what to say here. Bring in Eason, bring in Holyfield, delay at the line of scrimmage, a missed tackle again by a safety right in the hole. It's actually a 39-yard touchdown, and uh, he went about six yards airborne at the end of it. Straight ahead running, and he will drive into the end zone. Tips it intercepted by Georgia. Sony Michelle trying to outrun Florida. Don't forget, before we're done today, the play of the game, presented by Napa Auto Parts. Got some good ones to choose from. They're all Georgia plays. As you look at the beautiful sky over Jacksonville and over Everbank Field, 42 to nothing, Georgia. And they've got it at their own 12-yard line. Bull hunting especially. Elijah Holyfield, who had a big touchdown run the last time he touched it. And another I, I will say something for the... Yeah, when you go uh, Chubb in this game a year ago, nine carries for 20 yards. And Sony went three carries for two yards. And you can come back this year for 214 yards. I'd say mission accomplished. And on top of it, you have the number three team in the country. Well, it seems like when they start out, get to that rarefied seven or eight. No, they finish it off and get to the SEC championship, too. Victory formation for Jacob Eason. He'll take a knee. Georgia is 8 and 0. They're 5 and 0 in the conference. They're in the driver's seat in the SEC East.